Yeah. Welcome to VTO e Shikshana program. In the last class, we have discussed uh, what is signal overlapping uh, in the pneumatic circuit and what happens if the signal overlap occurs and how do we eliminate that different uh, techniques that can be used in eliminating the signal overlapping, signal elimination methods, overlapping signal elimination methods. Now in this class, we will concentrate on one simple circuit which has a signal overlapping and how we can resolve such a signal overlapping conditions using some technique. Uh, today I am taking an example of clamping and riveting process, clamping and riveting process. So, you are clamping and then rivet, uh, riveting the part. So, sheet metal components are being riveted using two pneumatic cylinders. The first cylinder is a clamping cylinder A which advances first, which moves forward, advances and clamps the sheet metal part. And then while the parts are clamped, second cylinder B gets advanced, gets advanced and performs the riveting operation, performs the riveting operation. riveting operation and the riveting cylinder retracts. So, this is interesting riveting cylinder retracts and finally, the clamping cylinder retracts. If you take this, so we need to ask uh, is there any signal overlap? So, uh, no in this case signal overlapping is not there. I okay. will come to signal uh, uh, signal overlapping circuits basically. Okay. So, let us now consider, now consider the case for that we have a two cylinders. So, the cylinder A and cylinder B. So, in the cylinder A and B, we need to have uh, uh, cylinder A forward and then cylinder B forward and then B retracts, B retracts. So, and then A retracts, then A retracts. So, that means cylinder A advances, remains in that position and cylinder B advances and retracts and then cylinder A retracts. So, this is how we can check the first thing whether the signal overlapping is happening or not we have to check. So, how do we know that the signal overlapping has occurred? So, where are the possibilities of signal overlapping? So, this has to be analyzed in the circuits. You draw the motion diagram and then you can also draw the signal diagram if required along with this and then check for the signal overlapping times or the positions. So, you can see I have drawn a red line here. So, the one of the area which can you get a overlapping of signals possibility is here. So, how? So, if you observe that now, if you observe this where exactly that is the possibility, you can see 1 s 1 is pressed ok, already 1 s 3, 1 s 3, where is the 1 s 3? 1 s 3, uh, 1 s 3 is uh, 1 s 1, 1 s 2, 2 s 1, 2 s 2, uh, one second, yeah here is the 1 s 3 ok. 1 s 3 is here. So, this is 1 s 3 ok. 1 s 3 is pressed here. So, now in this condition already the cylinder, the cylinder is at its back position here that is 1 s 3. This is the 1 s 3. 1 s 3 is pressed because initially it is at back that cylinder is here at this point, at this point, at this point ok. So, 1 s 3 is here. 
So now 1s3 is pressed means you are giving a signal on this side. You are giving the signal to this wall on this side. And other condition here, if you take it here, so that is 1s2. Where is 1s2? Observe where 1s2 is. If you observe this, so 1s2 is here. 1s2 is here. Means in the starting, initial starting, means at the beginning, at the beginning when you press 1s1, there can be a possibility that, there can be a possibility that, so both this and this are in the home position, means so it will be there in the back end. So that means both are pressed conditions, both are in the pressed condition. So that means at that point of time 1s3 and 1s2, 1s2. So cylinder A is at its back end and also cylinder B is also at the back end. This is at the starting point. So that means in the starting point as you know now 1s3 is this, 1s3 is this and 1s2 is this. If you observe this, you can find some something here. This is the one wall, this is the wall I was talking, this is the wall I was talking. This fellow is now getting both the signals. This fellow is getting the both the signals because 1s3 is pressed and also 1s2 is pressed. So this possibility is at the starting when both are at the retracted end. So both are is being pressed. So this fellow is getting a signal means this final control element is getting a signal for the both sides set and reset sides. So this gets confused. The wall gets confused at this point of time. What I should do? So a question will come to his mind. So this signal also coming and this signal also coming gets confused and stops. There can be a possibility of a, a problem due to this condition. This we call it as a signal overlapping. So means for a wall one, one instance at which the simultaneous signal can come is at the starting point. So that is why we draw a line here in the red to indicate you that at the starting point means at the time zero at the time 0, when both the signals, both the cylinder A and B is at retracted and both these walls are positioned uh, in this line to get the particular sequence and both may get signals because of that, because of that sometimes, sometimes, not always, I do not say uh, not all the times, but many a times you may have such problems in the uh, circuit. So simultaneous signals coming to a wall may be there. This is we call it as a signal overlapping. This is we call it as a signal. Now again as if you move forward, as if you move forward, is there any other position in the cycle we have a similar signal overlapping? Yeah, there can be a one more chance uh, if you observe here, this should be here. So here maybe. So we will check this in the next slide when why all these things will be shown in the next slide for you. Let me take that now because we are forwarding and retracting this will be held in the forwarded position. So we may have a possibility here. So we will observe that now. If you observe this now, yeah, this is the second point at which you can have a signal overlapping. So, in this condition 2s1 and 2s, uh, 2s1 and 2s2 is pressed. So, where at this point of time, at this point of time. So, if you go back to the circuit or uh, uh, yeah, I have in the next slide the condition for that. So, here I have shown the second time at which we get, we may get a, a overlapping signal is this point. So, so this is what I have showed it in the red line. So, what is that condition? What is that condition? If you 
observe that that condition was this 2s1 and 2s2 pressed so 2s1 and 2s2 pressed 2s1 and 2s2 pressed so one it will have where is 2s1 just cross check this 2s1 is here 2s1 is here that is the forward indicating limits which for the cylinder a so means when this moves forward it automatically presses when it presses the 2s1 will get activated so 2s1 means when this moves forward and hits this 2s1 this gets pressed so this gets pressed so when this gets pressed when this gets pressed when this gets pressed at the same time at the same time uh, now 2s2 where is 2s2 it's the forward it is in the forward okay it is in the forward okay so if that is the case if 2s2 is also pressed 2s2 is also pressed we are getting both lines charged to this valve at that point of time at this point of time there can be a possibility that the both the connections come to the set and reset ports of the dcv control element 2 which in turn gets confused due to the signal overlapping condition and you may have a problem in the circuit so in such a cases uh, the second uh, instance the signal overlap can occur is this point so this is the point so that means this this thing that is 2s1 and 2s2 both are pressed so when this can happen if you move up here you can see that that can happen at this point so that means when the cylinder starts uh, b starts retracting it moves already moved forward and it wants to retract but however the cylinder one is a remain in constant here just forward and reverse so this point of time you can have a second time at which you can have a signal overlapping condition now to resolve this or in the next slide i'll show you so how uh, we can observe that signal overlap has occurred if you observe this here it is clearly shown that for the second dcv that is control element 2 both the signals 2s1 and 2s2 are coming together so means 2s1 pressed and 2s2 pressed so now you just go and observe where the uh, 2s1 is 2s1 is this 2s1 is this and 2s2 is this means this is already in the forward and waiting in the forward only it is in the forward only and second cylinder moves forward and try to retract uh, for a while for an instant so this and this for a fraction of time this and this can coincide and when it coincides this valve gets a simultaneous signal so as the one is holding and it is in that position and the other one is coming and going coming and going coming and going is a short while but when it comes it catches with that signal the both signals gets come to the wall so set and reset both signals comes to the wall so the wall gets confused at point at that point so that is the figure which we have showed here at this point the wall may get a simultaneous signal so when this simultaneous signal is reached so the wall does not function and you will end up in a uh, improper motion in the circuit part so means one is here and the other one is here now there are two times in this kinds of circuits we can get a uh, signal overlapping signal overlapping will not occur throughout the cycle it can it is an at instantaneous times which can happen in the cycle due to the simultaneous signal which are coming to a particular valve so 
Uh, do not get confused, signal overlapping means all the time the signals are overlapping. No, no such conditions are there. So, signal overlap occurs at an instant fine time only, small intervals only. So, however, we need to avoid these kinds of things. As I said, there are some techniques. So, you can avoid this. Now, you have understood it is a short while coming and going signals. You can avoid this. So, how do one can avoid? In the first method, what I have told is you can use a, 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 a second type of roller uh, uh, limit switches that is I said idler return roller limit switch. So, this is the one. So, if you observe this and this, what is the difference here? You can see the difference is here the roller is straight, here the roller is straight and bent. So, in order to make this come to the normal position and, and press, so the pressing time or the working time of this valve gets delayed compared to this. So, it is the time at which the idler roller gets set come to normal position and then press. So, we are delaying the pressing of this valve. So, that while I said no, a fraction of time that gets that gets avoided that gets avoided by a mechanical means here by a mechanical means not by an electrical means. If you use the sensors or timers or something like that then we can call it as you are avoiding the signals using a timer or sensor. So, here we are avoiding this signal by using a idler roller limit switches. Now, we will see such circuit now, one such circuit. For the same circuit, we have adopted idler rollers. If you observe now, where we have put the idler rollers? Instead of a conventional rollers here, we have replaced the conventional rollers by an uh, idler lever bent lever type of roller limit switches. So, we were saying the simultaneous signals. Now, this is uh, can happen cannot happen because of this nature of the roller limit switch. So, you can avoid the simultaneous signal coming to a particular circuit. So, it is an easy technique, but one has to know where the signal overlap is occurring and which are the elements are to be replaced by mechanical uh, different types of rollers and then if you adjust that there is a need of little adjustment also adjusting your flow control valves uh, speeds and other thing. So, you can bring back and set the circuit once you set it it works fine. So, initially you may need a setting even if you do this. So, they are not the 100 percent solutions, but they can be one of the major solutions which can be provided at a low cost with less complexity. The second method, the second method I said it is a very reliable and 100% uh, uh, effective solution to the problem. So, what is this cascading method? So, as I said uh, used for sequential controls of cylinders and provides a standard method observe this it provides a standard method of designing circuits for multi cylinder applications. In this method what we do air supply to various pilot valves is derived from a group signal means the signals are grouped and in the grouping we avoid simultaneous signal coming and those groups gets a different supply from different headers. So, the method ensures a speedier circuit design there will not be any confusion here because separate lines. So, separate lines, separate supply is given. So, there is no confusion here. So, you can easily design such circuits, but looks little bit complex when compared to the previous circuits. To understand the principle of cascading, let us consider two cylinder operation in the initial level and let us designate the two cylinders as A and B and we will now try with a operation A plus B plus 
a minus b minus this is what we are trying to concentrate in many cases so in the industry also so we are trying to execute this motion using a cascade method so let me tell you this is not uh, so simple you have to understand some rules what are the things that you have to know before you go for a cascading method so group the sequence of operation some cylinder should uh, same cylinder should not operate or appear more than once in a once in a group it should not appear more than once in one group for example if you observe what is the meaning of that if you observe the grouping can be made like this first group you can take a and then take b second you are taking a minus and then b minus we are not clubbing the cylinder so if you try to club b plus b minus no no you are not allowed to do that or to a a plus a minus no you are not allowed to do that so it is trying to eliminate such possibilities itself so the grouping is done in such a way that the same cylinder should not appear more than once in a group so this is how we can take a grouping first we will do a grouping and then next is signal processing valves so that is basically your dcvs dcvs are used to distribute signals to the control valves uh, in such a way that the conflicting signals that is a overlapping signal do not occur so we will distribute or we will use the signal processing elements in such a way that the simultaneous signals will not go to a particular final control element very interesting statement we will not allow the simultaneous signals to go to the final dcv element we can avoid that by using some signal processing valves so that means this gives more importance to signal processing elements in the middle so in the layer to start from bottom to top we will include a one more layer wherein the signal processing elements or the valves will take care of avoiding the simultaneous signal to a particular dcv yeah now how one can do that number of spvs is equal to number of groups minus 1 you, you already group it and number of groups minus 1 is your signal processing valves the number of signal processing valves you need is equal to number of groups minus 1 this is the conventional thumb rule formula that uh, we use and now and now if you take uh, number of for this particular case if you take the number of spvs is 2 because we have a two groups two groups so two groups the four sequences that is a plus b plus a minus b minus so we have grouped that in such a way that the same cylinder should not occur when you group it a plus b plus a minus b minus a plus b plus becomes group 1 and a minus b minus will become the second group so because of this conditional statement and now we have got a two groups and as the groups are two i am putting it to here so number of spvs that we need is 2 minus 1 so that's how we can calculate the number of spvs which is required for a particular circuit and when you move ahead the separate signal output lines are used similar to the bus bars i said na bus bars is also one which takes the signals a, a set of signals through it like a wonderful example which i have given uh conventional road lines for 200 150 there are separate signal lines which are kept for the different speeds in the same condition we can take uh, an example of a bus bar or a conventional uh, speed speed lines similar examples and we separate signal output lines we can take and how do we arrive at the number of output lines 
that we may require for a particular case. So, the number of output signal lines that is, re that is required for a particular circuit is equal to number of groups. So, in this case we have a two group, so we need to have a two lines, two supply lines, we may call that as S1 and S2. So, you can say uh, first road, second road like that. Okay? So, we are creating a different roads, paths. So, so this is how one can know this. Now, I will try to explain this because this is as we are moving little bit into the complex technologies. I am going little slow and I am also trying to repeat because you have to catch up with the methodology. Most of the time, I know the students will not read these units for their exams also. Please do not do that. It is always very important. We are providing this syllabus in the syllabus because you should be ready for the industry. So, if you skip this here, you can score however because of choice and other things and you can get your marks, but still you are not ready to an industry standard. Here the intention is to make you to the ready for the industry standard. So, do not skip this. Rather, I had given better marks to a person who has attended this question, okay? even though he has done small mistakes in the middle. Okay? Why? Because at the complexity he is working. So, this gives the confidence to him over a period of time when he enters the industry path. So, please all the students understand, do not quit the part of the syllabus when it comes to difficulty because they are the ones which can link you to an application in the industry. They are the ones which are daily required in the industry. So, if you try to skip that, you are skipping what is required for you to learn. So, do not do that. So, now I will go very slow, understand this, how I am doing. I am going in steps. Let us take step 1. In the step 1, we will do only this much. So, as I said, the case is two cylinder sequencing. My two cylinders are this and this first cylinder A and B. I have considered here, I have considered the final control elements, set reset valves, final control DCVs here, that is your 1.1 and 2.1. I have placed this and connected this. Okay. So, observe this, the same steps I will give. In the step 1, you can draw this much. Select two double acting cylinders 1.0 and 2.0. So, this is 1.0 and this is 2.0. You select the two cylinder as we need a two cylinder sequencing without signal overlapping using cascading technique. So, put them like this and connect the both the ports of the cylinders to the DCV as shown. And each cylinder will have a 4 by 2 DCV. Observe this. Okay. And then double pilot activated, that is that we designated as 1.1 and 2. Double piloted means this and this. For both the walls, it has a set reset, double pilot. Select another 4 by 2 double piloted DCV. What is another 4 by 2? This is final element, this is the element which sits below the lines. So, another 4 by 2 element DCV, that is your point 3. So, this is the one, this is the one, this is the one. So, now draw two lines S1 and S2 in the middle like this. You, as said in the previous statement, so we have already said this is how you have to move. So, in the same fashion, we are trying to move it in the slide now. So, I have done now these things. I have taken two cylinders, two cylinders, okay, and they are these two, and I have taken two final control element, that is this two, both are double piloted valves here, and I have taken one more double piloted 4 by 2, which I have kept below the branch lines S1 and S2 and there are two lines 
that we have to come because I have already said the signal output lines will be equal to number of groups. We have a two groups. So, this is how two lines we have to take. I have taken S1 and S2. It is very clear, na? very easy also. So, not difficult. So, now we will move to the next step. What is in the next step? If you observe the previous and this, if you observe this previous and this, I have added some elements to this. So, just observe that this is there along with that I am adding. So, what is being added now? What is this added now in this? This was there earlier, two lines were there earlier. Now, in this slide, I have added this, this and this, this. So, there are four elements I have added. So, in step 2, in step 2, I am trying to avoid the signaling elements to this final DCV. So, signaling elements to this final DCV. Observe here, draw lines indicating horizontal positions of the roller limit. Okay. So, this and this you have to two strokes of the cylinders. Signal processing valves ensure that at any time only one signal is given to the signal line. Accordingly, connect the left side of the control valve to line S2. Left side of the control valve. This is the left side of the control. Left side of the control valve to signal line S2. Observe this. Left side is connected to signal line S2. So, here also left side of this through this valve we have taken to the S2, we have taken to the S2 and introduce, intro. when we say this to S2, the other right has to go to S1, just observe this, this is gone to S1, the right side of this DCV is also gone to S1. So, the left side we have connected to the S2 and the right side we have connected, what we have done? Simultaneous signal means this plus this. We are avoiding that, distributing that between the header 1 and header 2. See the easiest method here. So, there is no confusion. Both does not get signals at the same time. So, we have distributed that now. So, left to this side we have taken and right to the S1 we have taken. This is how we have simply checked the overlapping possibilities. And now, introduce the limit valves, these four, that is this, 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 this. So, these are to give signals to the respective elements for the process, for the sequence. Okay? So, now, this is what we call it as step 2. In the step 2, what you, what you are doing is, you are connecting the lines to the headers, connecting the DCV lines to the headers, respective headers and you are distributing left to S2 and right to the S1 of all the walls in this line. So, that you are avoiding that, bifurcating that, creating different buses for them. So, now in the next step, that is in the step 3, that is in the step 3, if you observe what we have done, earlier if you observe, this has been done, this has been done. This was the importance which we have given in the previous step. Correct? We have done this. And we have introduced this, this, this and this. Four elements we have introduced. Now, we try to connect this and connect this in this step. Connect this with a start, starting point element, starting element, input element. Input element is a detent type of 4 by 2 by valve, spring written type, when it gets pressed, it gets re release the condition. So, this is the element that we have added in here along with few lines. So, that is this line is connected to this side and this line is connected to this side of uh, this valve. So, this one, this is most important thing. So, here 1.2, 1.2 is this, this is pressed and whereas uh, other limit switch, 
other limit switch is 1.3 this is the thing this is open only not pressed so means initially this is pressed so that's how we have taken the initial condition taking that this is at the back end when we give supply the power will go to the power will automatically go this is already pressed to this and that results into the this and the header gets connected to this means to one if you switch it the power supply gets connected to this means we are shifting the power between these two lines we are shifting the power supply between these two lines by creating this here by creating this here we just switches the power supplies at so initially the power is to this and then when we get operate this the power supply goes to the other line so what is the purpose of this we did now what is the purpose that uh, in the stage 3 what is that we are trying to do we are connecting this and the starting element and connecting this to this memory wall uh, wall here which gives a signal for the subsequent headers h1 and h2 signal lines connecting to the subsequent header h2 so at one time this gets pressed at that time header 2 will be charged and when when we move this forward and press this this gets cut s2 gets cut and s1 is charged means we are charging s1 and s2 at different conditions so that's how the different lines are charged at different times with the different possibilities so so these two are the things that deliberately changes your avoiding the supply also so now in the step 4 in the step 4 it is almost done we have done in the initial stages so now since s2 is activated observe this since s2 is activated s2 is activated that means this line is activated in the initially this is what i told s2 is activated the control valve 1.1 the control valve 1.1 this one this one control valve 1.1 shifts to the left hand wall up and the cylinder extends a plus this will happen this will happen a plus will happen as the cylinder one extends as the cylinder one extends it immediately releases the limit valve 2.3 the 2.3 is this release the wall 2.3 so earlier it was pressed so that gets relieved so and that relieved this changes the position here this changes the position the piston rod extends and presses limit wall 2.2 presses the limit wall 2.2 see it relieves this and moves and hits this hits this means 2.2 is pressed this gets relieved and this gets pressed so when this gets pressed so this will this signal gets operated means this position move to this position so this line now will gets connect like this signal will go to this so if the signal air signal or the air pressure goes there so what happens this position is acted now so your air gets connected to this path so now we are giving a signal to the b plus so the cylinder b also moves forward the cylinder b also moves forward when the b moves forward what happens it hits 1.3 okay so the uh, the same thing he explains here allows the signal layer to Uh, air from s2 to go to the control valve 2.1 and this results in extension of the cylinder 2 that's what i said so b plus happens so now observe the, in the same as it cannot be put in one slide i'm taking to the trying to take it to the next slide 
with the same sequence. So, now we have already done A plus and then we have done B plus. So, according to this now in the next step the cylinder 2 gets extended that we have done it, it releases the 1.2, it releases this, it releases this signal uh, even though okay, that is okay and the line S2 still active so memory wall so S2 is active so that happens already and the piston rod of the cylinder 2 extend and presses the limit switch 1.3 this is important. So, as it moves forward this presses 1.3. So, where is 1.3? 1.3 is this if you observe this 1.3 is this. So, when the 1.3 gets pressed so this gets pressed this gets pressed so this is not this is not now this is not so when this gets pressed here goes from here to here and gives signal to this port you are changing your supply air supply from s2 to s1 now so this allows the air signal uh, to the pilot port point 3 okay that is this wall, point 3 is this wall, same wall which I have told and this cuts the air supply in the line 2. Air will not go to this, now the air will go to this because you are energizing this side. When we have done this, air was on this header. When we have done this, air will be in this header and air will not go to this line. So, this is how we are changing the air supply now after this gets pressed we are changing the air supply to this. Now, the air is here, air is here. When the air is here means this valve air can go here and this air can go here. Okay? So, uh, but provided with these conditions. Now, this cuts the air supply, we are here now and the signal now goes to the control element valve 1.1. 1.1 is this initially first it will go here. So, as it goes here it resets and moves back and hits what 2.3. When it hits 2.3, when it hits 2.3 only then this line can go here. So, that means after, after this signal goes here and ensuring that the first cylinder gets retracted and hits 2.3, the cylinder B retracts. So, that means after this gets hits 2.3, so this gets pressed, this gets pressed. So, then only the line gets charged here. So, that results in pushing this signal to this air to this side and uh, now we have done this. Now, after this hit, this hits this and this gets pressed then we, we can move this. So, means we have done A plus, B plus, A minus and then B minus, B minus. So, this is the sequence at which we have made the cascading technique to switch over our air supply to the header and ensure that no signal overlap occurs in the circuit and this is a very very reliable kind of design and uh, there, there will not be any signal overlap in such cases and your system can work efficiently for a long time without any such uh, overlapping problems of signals. So, and it is the most reliable and most easiest if you understand how to group the elements and how to take the line divided and make it as a bus lines and connect the lines using your signaling elements at the input side. So, with this I have now conveyed one of the best method which is being extensively used for a reliable circuit design in pneumatics which is referred to as cascading technique. Thank you.